All right, so for the past few days, I've been trying to figure out which of these phones has the best camera performance. I did my best to cover as many categories as possible. And for some of the categories, it was pretty easy to pick a winner, but for others, not so much. So for a few of the tests, you guys will have to make a decision for yourselves to figure out which one you think looks the best. I will put the specs for each of the phones on the screen momentarily. So feel free to pause the video if you wanna take a closer look. But aside from that, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first up, let's just take a look at overall dynamic range. In these first few shots, I think what stands out to me is that the Samsung looks to be a tad darker compared to the iPhone and the OnePlus. Not exactly a huge deal because you can easily adjust exposure at the time of taking a photo. Now in this particular shot, I actually feel like the Samsung handled things the best. To me, it looks like the iPhone lifted the shadows a bit too much and the OnePlus lowered the shadows a bit too much, whereas the Samsung is kind of that middle ground. Right here, we have another dynamic range test, except this time we're using the front facing cameras. And in this particular example, I would definitely go with the iPhone. I feel like it did the best job exposing for the sky as well as the subject, which is obviously myself. Right here, same exact test, except we're doing a video instead of a photo. And what stands out to me is that the OnePlus is definitely struggling trying to figure out how to expose for the sky. So in this situation, again, I would choose the iPhone. From there, let's go ahead and talk telephoto cameras. So in this shot, if you look closely, there is a sign there in the distance, and we're simply gonna use the telephoto cameras to punch into that sign. Now, to my eyes, I feel like the Samsung photo looks the cleanest overall. So if I had to pick out of this lineup, I would go with the S24 Ultra. Right here, obviously we have a building with a sign on top, and I'm just gonna show you the difference between the three phones as far as how far you can zoom. With the iPhone 15, you're maxed out at 25 times zoom. With the S24 Ultra, you can get 100 times zoom. And with the OnePlus 12, you can actually get 120 times zoom. In my opinion, I feel like the S24 Ultra gives you the cleanest telephoto shots. So in this example, again, I would go with the S24 Ultra. Right here, just another max zoom test. As you can see, there's a statue there in the distance, and we're just gonna zoom in as far as we possibly can. This time around, you can see we use the full 120 times zoom on the OnePlus 12, but as you can see, you start to lose out on quite a bit of detail zooming in that far. So in this situation, personally, I'm still going with the S24 Ultra. I think that photo holds up the best. Now, as far as video, I absolutely love the image quality of the telephoto camera on the iPhone 15, but the S24 Ultra actually gives you the furthest reach at up to 10 times zoom. From there, let's go ahead and move over to portrait mode. So to me, this really comes down to preference. I wouldn't really say there's a clear cut winner either way you go, but the two main things that I've noticed is that the iPhone 15 is on the sharper side and the OnePlus 12 is on the softer side. The next comparison is only between the iPhone 15 and the S24 Ultra because the OnePlus 12 doesn't really have a cinematic mode equivalent. And in this particular example, I would go with the iPhone. I feel like the S24 Ultra is a little overexposed and I feel like the blurred out background effect looks a bit more artificial. Now you could easily adjust those two things. You could bring down the exposure and reduce the amount of blur. But in this particular example, Again, I would choose the iPhone. Next up, let's talk microphone and audio performance. The easiest thing to do here is to simply let you guys be the judge. All right, so as you guys can see, we are outdoors testing out the iPhone 15 Pro Max, S24 Ultra, and the OnePlus 12. It is pretty windy out here today. I also have a road right behind me with some traffic noise taking place. Uh, so the purpose of this video is to test out the microphones in between the three phones. Something else to consider as far as taking photos and videos is battery life. That's one thing that'll drain your battery the fastest. And that's why we have to talk about this. It's the Anchor MagGo wireless charging station. It's a three in one convertible charger made specifically for Apple devices. If you have an iPhone, a pair of AirPods and maybe an Apple Watch, that's potentially three separate chargers to keep track of. But with this, you could charge all of them with the same device. It's extremely compact, 
For reference, you can see it here up against the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And when it's time to charge, you simply open it up and you have three charging surfaces, one for your iPhone, one for your AirPods and one for your watch. As far as charging speed, you're getting up to 15 watts, which is the same as the original Apple MagSafe charger and faster than the 7.5 watts that you get from a traditional wireless charger. It also has an Apple Watch fast charging certification, which means it can give an Apple Watch 9 a 47% boost in just 30 minutes. The build quality is excellent. It's got a nice strong magnetic surface and the fact that you can fold this thing up and literally throw it into your pocket makes it perfect to take on the go. You can also use it as a phone stand. You could keep track of notifications throughout the day, use it for video calls or even watch movies. So check out the link in the description for more information and use this code here to save 15% off. And thanks to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. From there, let's go ahead and get into some low light examples. Honestly, I think all three phones do a pretty good job. There's not really any drastic difference to where you would for sure want to go with one over the other, at least in my opinion. Now, what I have noticed is that the S24 Ultra does respond a lot more to bright light sources. And you can definitely see it here in this video example. As soon as it detects that bright light across the street there, it really brought that exposure down whereas the iPhone and the OnePlus 12 just kind of left things where they were at. As far as the front facing cameras in low light, you are going to notice a lot more noise. With the OnePlus, I think you have the least amount of noise, but also the least amount of detail. I do like the brighter exposure of the S24 Ultra, but in return, you are getting the most amount of noise. So for me personally, in this situation, I will go with the iPhone 15. Now let's move things over to macro mode. Honestly, I think all three phones are very capable as you can see here. What you will notice is more saturation on the S24 Ultra as well as darker shadows. And you can really see it here in this example. Again, I think the saturation is a little overdone and I feel like you're losing out on some of the detail in the darker areas of the pine cone. And for those reasons, I would either choose the iPhone or the OnePlus 12. Next up, let's talk slow motion. The biggest takeaway is that the S24 Ultra allows 4K 120 frames per second. Both the iPhone 15 and the OnePlus 12 downgrade to 1080p. And right here, you can see more detail on the front of this streetcar. If you look at the headlights as well as the badging there on the front, definitely more clarity. And for that reason, I think the S24 Ultra has the advantage. The next category is stabilization. I did two different tests, one with standard stabilization and one with action mode, ultra steady and super steady. And both times I feel like the iPhone not only gave me the best looking footage, but also the most stable footage. So I would definitely go with the iPhone as far as stabilization. Even though 4K video is still the standard, some devices do offer 8K video, including the S24 Ultra and the OnePlus 12. If we compare the screen grabs to the iPhone 15, which maxes out at 4K, you will notice slightly more detail on the Samsung and the OnePlus. Personally, if I had to choose one, I would probably go with the S24 Ultra. I just prefer the way that the colors look compared to the OnePlus. I also want to talk about some of the pro features when it comes to these options. With the S24 Ultra, you have a pro video mode that allows you to dial in all of your settings manually. So you can set your white balance, your focus point, your shutter speed, your ISO, and you have full creative control over the look of your video. This way you don't have to rely on your phone making the proper adjustments. The OnePlus 12 has a very similar feature called movie mode. And again, it gives you full creative control, very much like a professional grade camera. With the iPhone, you do need a third party app to get the same level of control. However, you do get ProRes log footage. Now, if you don't know what log footage is, honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you do know what it is, then you know it can be a definite game changer for the more advanced user. There's also some really unique features to consider when it comes to these phones as well. The first one being the option to change the focal point of a photo on the iPhone. So you could take a portrait selfie and then later decide you actually want the focal point to be something in the background. And that's a feature that you don't get with the S24 Ultra or the OnePlus 12. 
a feature you do get on the S24 Ultra is the new built-in AI. So as you can see, I've got a picture of a statue here and I can basically surround that statue and it gives me the option to either reposition it or I can remove it completely. So I simply click generate, give the AI a couple seconds to do its thing. And as you can see, it replaces it with artificial intelligence. And I gotta say, this is a really cool feature. It doesn't work perfectly on every photo, but on the ones that it does, it turns out really nice. So that pretty much covers it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be somewhat helpful if you're trying to narrow down your decision as far as which of these phones you should get. So if it was helpful, do me a favor, like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. And aside from that, I'll see you guys in the next one.